Hello, so everyone. We're live now. What do you want to do? This, you guys, I'm excited. This is the last show of 2019. It is. It's the last show. Yep. And Nicole's sick again, so this show will be brought to you by hand sanitizer. My friend. Oh, I'm telling you. Does anybody else have issues with freaking allergies? Does anyone else have issues with allergies? <laughs> I'm so sick. I think plants started to live again What's in up, 60 Jessica? degree days. Yeah. Oh, I'm touching. I'm touching Nicole's phone again. I'm gonna well, need some you're more. gonna hand sanitizer again. I We're guess. We're gonna sanitize up, everyone. <laughs> we should count how many times I sanitize my hands on this. Uh huh. So Craig decided it'd be a super good idea to do a show where it's the audience's choice about what we talk about. So it smells like alcohol in here from hand sanitizer. I just want to say that for the record. Good from morning, his Jessica. Third hand sanitizer. Already. Oh, I'm gonna have to do another one too. You better not. Uh, I still have some of them, yeah. So it's weird, some. weird. All right, so we got a couple things. First of all, why don't you guys tell us what, if in the comments, go ahead and tell us what you'd like us to touch on. If not, we've got some things like we thought, we thought about doing the top five things that happened in 2019. We could do the top five things we're looking forward to in 2020. Those types of things, goals. Yeah, like Craig's that. idea on a sick day for Nicole, probably not going to work so well. I'm just saying for the record. Oh, that's all right. I can carry the show. I've done it before. <laughs> done about 100 something oh, episodes. I'm like, my eyes are just like. All right. Me? So let's start off. 2020 is coming up. This is the last show. Like I said, what, next Wednesday, I think, is the first of January. Is yeah, that right? Yeah. This Already. coming Wednesday. So in like it's crazy. six days, five days, something this like that. This year has like flown by. I can't believe that Christmas is over already. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a fast year. It feels like it was less than 365 days. Yeah, pretty much. All right. I feel like it was like last month. So goal setting we think is very important. If you don't have <clears> goals, <throat> if you didn't plan out 2020 yet, I would. You definitely need to do that You now. should do that. It's yeah. late already. Top five worst Craig jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, there's a... There's probably more than five, yeah. I don't even know if you could pick a top five. That's like, that's like me picking which one of my kids is my favorite. <laughs> Just kidding. I could easily do that. <laughs> That doesn't surprise me. He knows me. which one he is. Uh-huh. Is that one of your top five ladies? Neither one jokes? of them are my favorites. Uh, well, there you go. I beat them just for, uh, no, I fun, don't. Fun. Pleasure. Yeah, it's fun. They're big for me. Good morning, Wayne. Exactly why we okay, should so, not have an unscripted show. Again, no, goal setting <clears throat> is very important. Set some goals. If you haven't, talked to your office manager, talk to your owners, you know, Set some goals. You know, if you, what is that? A ship without a rudder is never lost or something stupid like that. You know, sayings are not my thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but here's the thing about goal setting. It doesn't have to be just work goals. <clears throat> it can also be personal goals, especially like if you're, you know, going really hard at work and you're not spending a whole lot of family time at home. <clears throat> Maybe a goal needs to be trying to figure out how you get to balance that a little bit more. I do think balance is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Also, staying healthy, you know? <laughs> staying healthy, right? Right, sicko? Yeah, Craig told me this morning I need to become a germaphobe. I'm like, okay. Maybe just not cough, you know, wildly into the air or, you know. I know I'm going to try to do this. But I've never seen around, her do that ever. I'm like, <coughs> I've never seen face. her do that ever. She kind of puts her hand like this to <laughs> disperse the germs. So, right. anyway. What else are we going to talk about? Because nobody else has said anything. Nobody else wants to hear anything this morning? Anybody? Anybody? Well, we got, we got a lot of things. You know, 2020 should be a really good year. We've got, it's an election year. So that's going to be something that's going to be, it's going to cause some uncertainty in the marketplace. And That's what I was going to say. Let's talk about that. How do you think it's going to affect our market? Well, Lawrence Yoon, the NAR, the NAR economist, uh, it does kind of depend on what happens in this election cycle. If the, it, it really just depends. If more Republicans get elected in this cycle into the House and Senate and stuff like that, and, and President Trump stays in office, um, that might not be bad for the real estate market. If if the other side gets in and causes a little bit of turmoil and stuff like that, um, that might not be, it might cause a little bit of uncertainty in with the economy and might, might slow the market down a little bit. But we have a factor that does not follow the national models, and that is the crazy tax situation that's happening in Illinois. Well, that's what I was going to say. We also have, isn't the Ford plan expanding? And they're building that casino in Gary too, right? I yes. Yeah, I believe. I yes, on both accounts. I think that's actually supposed to be done by August of next year, I think. so. And that's going to help. I mean, Gary's economy, will that'll help Gary's economy. That'll help, that'll help everything. <coughs> Ford expanding. 
Taxes are higher. A lot of people, like a lot of our agents are working with people from Illinois right now. They're buying houses every day. The market has slowed down a little bit compared to last winter. Uh, last yeah, winter I agree with that. But it's not like it was five years ago in, in winter time. I mean, normally this is, there's nothing happening at this time of year. Well, I think the weather holding out is also helping a little bit with that. Um, I know we're supposed to snow this. Actually, I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. I thought it was supposed to snow this weekend, but now I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. It's going to rain? Uh -huh. It's supposed to be 51 tomorrow. Yay! Wow, today's only going to be in the 30s, I think, right? It's almost, I think it was 38 when I came in. I think it's like supposed to be 40 or something. Yeah. So, so those are some good things that we have to look forward to. So I think there's still a lot of unrest on what is exactly is going to happen, but it doesn't matter. You know why? If you still, if you have a plan for what you're going to do to generate leads and what you're going to do for your business, you can still execute anyway. Yeah, because I would say normal election years are normally soft, but I'm hoping with the things that we have growing in our economy, it's going to stay at least steady this year versus where I think the last election, that was not a great year. No, there was a lot of, that was a weird, yeah, that, that was, was a weird election, weird, yeah. you know, That's and, true. and even so, I mean, it's, the country seems to be very polarized right now. Like, yeah. and, and I think as real estate agents, it doesn't really matter you know, we don't, we're not, this isn't a political show, so none of that really matters. It just depends on how, how it's going to affect the real estate market. All right. What else you got? What else do I got? Well, let's see. What Mr. else? Unscripted. Besides goal setting, um, if it does slow down a little bit, what's something that you can do? Train. You know, you can learn more. Um, the Board of Realtors, NAR, has that C2EX, C2X or whatever. What's that? The Commitment to Excellence. Oh. That's a new designation you can get. Um, that's something that's cool. <laughs> You can get involved with the state, with IAR. IAR's got their um, legislative sessions coming up in the end of January where... Oh, do your continuing ed right now. Oh, yeah, do your continuing education. Don't wait till June 30th to get it done. Yeah. Um, you know, you can call Sarah that was on the show last week. You can call her at the board and find out, you know, if you have any details on what you need to get as far as how many hours you need and all that kind of good stuff. Isn't Code of Ethics due this year? Code of Ethics is not due this year, which is There's surprising. Because we are seeing a surge in, in non-professional activities and actions. And there, you know, there's more ethics complaints going on right now than we've seen in the past. But well, um, we only have to take it once every three years? Is that Once right? every three years now. Okay. Yep. Yep. I think I have to take it more, though, because I have the managing broker thing. No? No. Uh, no. Hmm. no, 2021. All right. Unless I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, tell me in the comments. Somebody. When are we re-upping our license, too? Oh, he broke it now. I broke it. Is Life? that 2021 too? Is Code of Ethics in 2021 the same? I don't know. Same licensing? I don't know. We gotta ask Sarah. Well, that would have been a good question for you to ask her last uh, week. Craig oh, has been have... trying to wave at you, Tracy, for like five times and it's he can't get it to go. Tracy. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm trying. <coughs> the button's all gray, like I touched it, but it's not working anyway. Okay, so what else? What else do we have for 2021 or 2020? I think for me, what I'm working on this winter is our training library for the team. So like as a team leader, maybe doing your training videos and getting that all set up on your website. That's what I'm working on. Right I've now. heard some brokers do that where they can say like, if you're, hey, I'm having trouble with the inspection response. I say, okay, watch video number 17. Yeah. You know, and, and they do that. We have not done that really with us yet, but it's something, it's an option. It's something we can maybe I shot do. three videos yesterday because it was super slow and nobody, and they were long ones too. So... So I had that, got that uploaded to our That's website. good. So when people, when your team watches, they can know what disease you had at that time. Like, oh, this was sinus infection. I didn't sound this oh, bad this, yesterday. This was asthma. <laughs> oh. Sorry, dude. Oh, no more hand sanitizer. Get out of here. This stuff's so gross. That, it's that's so like bad me saying for stop you. coughing all over the place. It's so bad for so you. So is your germs. Trust me. They're worse. I'm sorry. Well, this is bad for me. Yeah, I really said the girl who's sick always. Sorry. I was sick like twice all, like in the last two years. Mm hmm yeah, anyway. Anyway, okay, so I think... Do we have anything else to talk about? Unscripted? Uh, well, what are, what are some wins from 2019? What's something that you did that helped your business this year? I really focused on my recruiting game. Yeah, yeah. So recruiting, I would not say... I would say I'm pretty with recruiting agents with new licenses, but I'm working on still recruiting agents that are currently licensed. Okay, I'm okay. in the business a little bit. That is what I've been working on. I think, I think one thing we've tried to focus on a little bit at the office was is accountability. I think that's what we really try to do is, um, you know, I've got a couple agents that I help hold them accountable to their goals every day. Um, 
Yeah, being sick is greater than hand sanitizer, Jeff. That's crazy. <laughs> and to think that awesome. I agree to you, with you sometimes. <laughs> Man. Anyway. So, so yeah, accountability. You know, we, we do some goal setting with some agents at the office, and then I just, I work to keep them accountable to the goals that they set for themselves. What about you guys? What's some good stuff that you did um, in your business this year? Did you make your goals? Please comment below. Yeah, what about you guys? Did you guys do anything? You mean Lysol wipes. Uh -huh. Right? Thanks, Mom. We need a divider right here, like a germ <laughs> a germ wall. Is your mom watching too? My mom's watching. Just I don't saying. think. I haven't seen my mom on there yet. <laughs> no. No, my mom's probably supporting <clears throat> my brother or sister and not me, but whatever. Whatever. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I had to tell him to quit being mean to his mom the other day. That's the truth, too. That's a sad. That's why his face is fire at your Don't red. touch I me. I got your back, Don't touch me. I got your back. Following a business plan. That's good. Yeah, that is that is important, Jeff. <coughs> and one, making a business plan. You know, like, that's what most people fail on that step. Make Nicole wear a mask. I wish. I wish. I had a goal of 40. Jeff said he had a goal of 40. Hey, good job, 41. Jeff. That's a good, that's a good number. That's a yeah. big number. And then he said making mistakes, too. So, yeah, I think the big thing is everybody's going to make mistakes. You have to learn from it. Yeah. Especially with the business plan thing. And that's, you know, both of those combining is... A business plan isn't a finite thing. It's not something you should set at the beginning of the year and never touch or do anything ever again with it. So, um, you know, you should be looking at that minimum probably once a quarter and adjusting those goals if need be because nobody wants to get to the end of the year and have not made one single goal because maybe you were overzealous or you met all your goals and you didn't give yourself any stretch goals. So um, it's something definitely that needs to be more of like a living goal thing versus something that you set and forget about i'll tell you what a great book on goal setting <clears throat> and and following through with that is called atomic habits we, we should have we should link to this so i can like can get get like do an amazon, affiliate amazon affiliate link in the comments yeah. but atomic habits was a great book um it tells you basically how to create and get rid of bad habits create good habits stuff like that and if you can make something a habit, like let's say your goal, okay, like Jeff, let's say your goal is to sell 40 homes and you figure out that you need to reach out to, you know, 2,500 past clients in a year for that. If you can turn that into a habit, you know, like when I first started going to the gym a couple years ago, I, I did not enjoy it. I looked, I dreaded getting up and going to the gym. The gym, what's that? Exactly, exactly. Um, but now I do it three days a week. I don't think about it. I just go like Monday, Wednesday, usually I don't even think about it. I know I'm going to do cardio that day. I, I sometimes skip lunch just to run on an empty stomach. Who knows? But That's I don't think about it anymore. That's not healthy. It, well, okay. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah. Don't skip well, lunch. Don't I could, eat avocados. I could eat three times a day and be sick all the time. <clears throat> and that would be great, right? Don't eat avocados and beans or whatever, which is the only thing he ever eats. I don't eat a lot of beans or whatever it is. I do eat avocados. There you go. Mm -hmm. I eat pretty regular now, but I just don't. I just. You have like a half an avocado and be like, oh, it's so good. No, I like, I like grass fed. No one cares about what my diet is. I like grass fed cows. Uh -huh. I like vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. To create a business plan template Any or website. <clears throat> most, most large brokerages have that. If you're at a smaller or an independent brokerage, most of the time your broker owners will also have that. If you are a broker owner and you don't have that, um, business plans are simple. You can, one thing is you have to have, um, you have to track numbers for a while. Like, okay, I was in Mike Ferry training and then um, rehab loans. Yeah, Jeff those are good. His, Jeff put his uh, link up there for business plan. <laughs> the other thing <laughs> nice, I would say nice, is um, make sure it's a SMART goal. So it's specific, measurable, attainable, results oriented, and time bound, right? So I went over this with my team recently. <clears throat> so Ken? It doesn't have to be a complicated business plan. You know, each of my team members are supposed to do three things they're going to work on this year. But I did want them to do it in the smart format. So they can't just be like, I'm going to sell 40 homes, right? It needs to be, I'm going to contact, you know, 2,500 people every three months to get this many listings. And I'm going to do that once a quarter, whatever it is, right? So it's specific and it's attainable. You don't want something that is over the top that you can't do, right? Um, so it doesn't have to be all fancy. When I first started, it was literally, I had a piece of paper that I had in my little cubicle and had like a Santa on a beach because dances at the end of the year. 
Um, and it was literally just, I'm gonna do this volume, this many homes um, for the year, right? And then as things got bigger and more complicated, then, you know, that second year, then I started, you know, whatever I, um, whatever, are you on the phone right now? No, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm showing a book <clears throat> thing. Whatever I accomplished, then I used at least three different pillars the next year to work on. Because as you guys know, you know, your business is all about layers. You can't work on the same thing year after year and expect to keep, you know, increasing your productivity. That's not going to work. Um, <coughs> so that's my suggestion for business plans. Craig's pulling up. I was, I was going to try to give you another book, uh, a book recommendation, The Four Disciplines of Execution. That talks about setting a wildly important goal. You know, they call that your wig. And then it talks about lag measures and lead measures. Like, okay, for instance, like Nicole's saying, if I wanna, if I want to sell forty homes a year, that's hard to make that my goal. Oh, well, that's uh, of course that's a goal, but then you have lead measures and lag measures. A lag measure might be how many listings you've taken or how many showings you've went on. You can't really control that necessarily, but what you can control is how many leads that you follow up with or how many contacts that you make per day. So what that book trains you to do is follow those lead measures, and if you can get consistent on hitting those lead measures, that's where that's where it becomes good. And then if it becomes a habit, that's gonna be even more powerful. That's awesome. All right, we're gonna move on. Ken Reardon's asking about rehab loans. Rehab loans are kind of rare. A lot of mortgage brokers really don't do them. Um, this Now there are conventional rehab loans that I've only heard one or two lenders have, so, but Those they're are expensive. I think the most yeah. common one we have is the FHA 203K. 203K? Or yeah. 203B loan, which is basically a regular loan, but. Well, um, that's a good point. A lot of people don't know with the 203B though, there is usually allowed, I believe it's a $5,000 repair escrow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most people don't, like HUD homes and stuff like that, people think a lot of those sell conventional or most of them sell FHA loans or cash. Because you can't do, you know, like, like for a conventional, all all three utilities, water, gas, and electricity, all of that needs to be on. And HUD typically will not allow the buyer to turn the water on because a lot of times those systems are have been compromised. Hey, I got a question for the lenders on here. Because I had one of my preferred lenders tell me this, but the other um, say no, they have not heard of this. Um, FHA with a well, have you heard that there's a flow rate test that's required now um, starting in October? Has anybody heard that? I have not heard that. I have not either. So that's a question for the lenders that are on right now. Yeah. Because um, I saw the rehab and the VA come up. So Ken, what I would say <laughs> as far as rehab loans go, one, they're an awesome tool, especially if a house needs work. And I, I had a buyer that I did one two or three K this year. It was fantastic. I mean, the buyer got the basement finished. The buyer had a whole bunch of cool things done to the house that they did kind of for their own enjoyment, but it wasn't like they could not put a pool in or a hot tub or something like that, but they were allowed to finish out a basement. They put a second bathroom in the basement and things like that, which is greatly gonna increase the value of your property. Another great win this year that I we should talk about was there was a, I had a buyer, past client, that bought a little two bedroom house in Griffith. Not a little, it was like a 1120 square foot a normal, this is kind of a typical ranch layout, three bedrooms, two bath, or a bath and a half, whatever. The previous owner took a closet wall out in the third bedroom that backs up to the living room, all right, right, right by the front door, and basically made that just a walk-through den or office, sold it as a two-bedroom. I talked to the client when they were going to resell the house, and I said, you know what, put that closet back in there. Now you're a three bedroom. We sold it for almost 50,000 more than what she even bought it for. Nice. It was fantastic, you know, and she only owned a couple of years. So it was a really a great win for her. She was super excited. Um, and it was just having the wherewithal of no, hey, look, something, this property just needs another, <clears throat> uh, needs to be refinished exactly how the house was built and they would have been fine. But the rehab loans, let's talk about that for a minute still. You know, those are gonna be probably a little bit longer turnaround time because you do have to have a contractor and I normally recommend a general contractor to go out and quote um, the work that needs to be done that the buyer wants. And then you have to have the appraiser look at the quote plus um, what the home is selling for and whatnot to make sure it's gonna appraise out with those repairs. So they can do um, they can do appliances, a fence, things like that, but you have to be kind of careful because it, what repairs are doing have to appraise out. And your client is probably gonna pay a little bit higher interest rate on that um, for those repairs too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so. true. All that's true. But that's good for like a VA or FHA or if you have somebody that's really stuck and is like, 
I just want this home. I just want this home. And you know, it's not going to pass FHA. Um, you know, you can then suggest that 203K loan. And if they really want it, they'll pay the extra money to get the stuff done on it. And with VA loans too. Okay. So Ken, you're asking about VA loans also. Again, that's one, you know, I, I, I guess I would recommend you talk to a lender on stuff like that. There are many lenders that do VA loans and then some don't. Um, VA loans usually are no money down. Um, it's not really any kind of penalties to the seller anymore like it used to be. Not penalties, but the seller had to pay some extra fees. Um, they no longer really have to do that. I don't even know if they have to pay for the pest inspection anymore. That they still do. Do they? We have, okay. We've had quite a lot of VAs here at the end of the um, year, so they do still have to pay for the pest inspection. Um, but if you're nice, you know, you tell your buyers to roll it in with their home inspection and then have the sellers pay the 50 extra dollars to have it on there instead of the 250 they'd pay to have them go out there or 150, yeah. whatever it would be. Um, that's the way you can work together. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. All right. I think, I feel like we're just babbling. At this yeah, point. we are. We're done. I think we're done with this show. All right. Last show for 2019. Hope you guys have a great new year. Safe new year's. We will see you next week um, in 2020. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, right. guys. And Have thanks everyone for, who commented and did all that great stuff. Thank you so much. Have all a right. good one. And we are out.